In this tutorial, I will talk about how to use Comfin in a design process and when to use it. It's a strong conceptual tool, especially in the early stage of a design process, where you can use it for looking at geometrical and room properties in relation to the window size and placement and so on. For example, in this case here, I have different types of window placement and size. And here I easily can see some differences between the different scenarios, but it doesn't give that much sense to look at the differences in relation to thermal comfort because they are in a way quite equal because I'm using the same window type without any shading and so on. But that could be the next step going deeper into the shading design or blind. But this first step, it's much about the daylight, especially down here, looking at these conceptual daylight diagrams. And of course, uh, looking at the energy consumption, if it have any effect on the overall energy use. It's easy to see the difference between a northern oriented facade comparing to the southern oriented facades for the daylight. This daylight calculation is not the daylight fact, calculate the amount of locks. For this very early stage, I think it's very useful with, for the energy table here and the daylight simulation. And on the, the energy page, I think, I think it's quite interesting to look at these peak days that I can use for further investigation and studies. See how the reflectance and shadows affect the daylight especially. And of course, we can also see the energy consumption, how it affects through the year. At this stage it doesn't give that much meaning of looking at the solar heat gain when I don't have any kind of shading system and without any context then it's in a way quite obvious how the different proposal react on the solar heat. Of course that's a lot more solar gain on the southern oriented facade in relation to the northern oriented facade but the daylight page that's quite useful in this early stage where you can see the the level of the lux for different months and for time on day that's quite interesting graph to look at and get a better understanding of how these room are performing and of course this one with the daylight levels in relation to the depth of the room so room three one of the best one and that's of course it's oriented to the south but if we also look at room two with the higher window it also have quite good daylight and the last page i think that's very useful at this conceptual stage that is the useful illuminance where i can see okay which room does have the the best distribution of the light into the room. So again, room three with orientation to the south have the best useful daylight, of course. It is the same graph as this one, actually. The only difference is that here it's shown with the green color, which levels that is the useful daylight. And for the more visual and spatial views, these false colors rendered views is quite effective to understand how the light is distributed inside the room and we can especially see here the differences between the northern and the southern oriented facade. Quite a difference between the how the light is distributed. And this is of course for the clear sky. You could also look at the diffuse sky because it's not always a clear sky all year round. And last, I think looking at, at numbers, you get a more detailed understanding of the small differences between different room types. Because when you are have optimized your project as far as possible, then it is the small things that counts and make the big difference. So it is needed to go more into detail and look at these numbers. For example, if we look at the, the heating, then there is a big difference between the northern oriented and the southern oriented facade. And this is due to the passive solar heat gain through the windows. Later in the process, you may want to go deeper in to look at these glazing systems because then it's getting really important which kind of glazing you have, shading system you have. And for this, there's a huge library of different shading system. If you look at one here, you can see here that it's a different types as default, but if you 
just try to go in and edit one of these we can see here that you have a loads of possibility of going in and work with what kind of shading control this specific shading system have and this will definitely have an effect on the both the daylight and the thermal and the energy so this would be a natural next step when you have optimized and decided what what kind of geometry should this window and placement have when you're taking this next step of going more into detail with the different glazing and shading system then it will getting more useful to look at the these thermal comfort graphs as well as the energy because this will have a huge effect on these parameters